Thank you for joining us today on A Date with Destiny as we celebrate the birth of our dear Lord. Jesus is alive. Jesus is real. And He desperately and passionately wants to become your Lord and Savior. With all that is within me today, I plead with you to repent of your sins and give Him complete control of your life. The title of this message is, Do You Have the Heart of Simeon? He was looking for Jesus. Do you have the heart of Simeon? He was looking for Jesus. At the close of this message today, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make the greatest decision that a spiritually lost person can ever make. And that is the decision to repent of your sins and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior by faith. Let the power of God transform your life today. Our text for this message is found in Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 35. I'll begin with reading Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 24. And when eight days were completed for the circumcision of the child, his name was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Would you pray with me? Father, in Christ's name, we praise you today that before the foundation of the world, you knew that we would all be here today. Father, I'm aware of the assignment that is before me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Father, may not one word leave my tongue, but that it does not first come from thee to me. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Mary and Joseph carried out the pronouncement of the angel by naming their son according to the word which had come to her before the baby's conception. Luke chapter 1, verse 31, the angel Gabriel said to Mary, And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. The name Jesus is very fitting, for it is the Greek form of the Hebrew name Joshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. This passage is called the presentation. Mary and Joseph presented Jesus in the temple to be circumcised on the eighth day after his birth, as is commanded in Leviticus chapter 12, verse 3. This was an important event for firstborn sons, as is explained in the Bible in Exodus chapter 13, verses 2 and 12. The circumcision marked him as a Jewish male and sealed him by the sign of the covenant of God with Israel. Thirty-three days later, they were to bring an offering for Mary's purification after childbirth, as is explained in Leviticus chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. The offering which they presented for her purification showed that they were a very poor couple. They could not afford a lamb, so they bought a pair of doves or pigeons, which were all they could afford. And they traveled the short distance from Bethlehem to Jerusalem, which was five miles, for the presentation and purification at the temple. This brings us to Simeon's meeting, Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. Simeon is mentioned nowhere else in the Bible. Do you have the heart of Simeon? He was looking for Jesus. Are you looking for Jesus today? He's looking for you. First of all today, Simeon was obedient. Simeon was obedient. Look back in our text in Luke chapter 12 and look at verses 25 through 28. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and he blessed God. Simeon walked closely with God. How do we know? The Bible tells us that he was a just man. He was a righteous man. He was a devout man. Simeon was a moral and a God-fearing man. The words just and righteous are used to translate the Hebrew word siddiq, meaning just, and yashar, which means upright. One idea is inherent 
in these two words. The righteous or the just man is called this because he's right with his God. And he's right with his God because he has observed all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. In other words, Simeon was obedient to his God. If you possess these qualities in your life, you are a true spirit-filled follower of the Lord Jesus. This verse tells us that the Holy Spirit was upon Simeon. As followers of Jesus Christ, we're commanded to be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians 5, 18, Paul tells us, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Are you a Spirit-filled follower of the Lord Jesus? Are you even a follower of the Lord Jesus? In just a few moments, I'm going to give you an opportunity to make the greatest decision that a spiritual lost person can ever make in their life. The decision to repent, to turn from your sins, and to make Christ your Lord and Savior by faith. I plead with you today with all that is within me to make this decision. Don't put it off any longer today. When the living God of heaven and earth decides to speak to you, He will speak to you. And when He speaks to you, He has a message that is tailor-made just for you. The Holy Spirit will never ever lead you to do anything that is contrary to the Word of God. So just do what God tells you to do. The Bible tells us in 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, to obey is better than to sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. God wants His people, His followers, to be completely, fully, and wholeheartedly obedient to Him and to Him alone. In John 16, 13, Jesus states, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. Being led by the Holy Spirit is proof that you belong to God. Romans 8, 14, the Bible says this, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Simeon was just. Simeon was devout. Simeon was looking for Jesus. Verse 25 tells us that he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, meaning he was waiting for the comforter of Israel, the Messiah. The Lord Jesus, the one who would bring comfort to the nation or the redemption of Jerusalem. What is his name? His name is J-E-S-U-S. That name is spelled Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Isaiah predicted that Jesus would arrive. In Isaiah chapter 25, verse 9, the Bible states, And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. We've waited for Him. And He will save us. This is the Lord. We've waited for Him. We will be glad and rejoice in His salvation. Simeon was looking for Jesus when He came into this world the first time. Are you looking for Jesus when He will come into this world the second time? The signs of His imminent return are all around us today. Are you ready to stand before Jesus to give an accounting of your life? Simeon was an old man when this incident took place in his life and the Holy Spirit had promised him that he would not die until he had seen the Christ child the Lord Jesus the Messiah Simeon was obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit at his, as he made his way to the temple can't you just see this beautiful scene with Simeon and Mary and the baby Jesus and Simeon just walking up to them and, and, and asking them this glorious question may I hold your beautiful baby in my arms. May I hold your beautiful baby in my arms. Simeon was obedient. Do you have the heart of Simeon? He was looking for Jesus. First of all, Simeon was obedient. Secondly, today, Simeon was joyful. Simeon was joyful. Look back in our text in Luke chapter 2 at verses 29 through 32. <clears throat> Simeon said this, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. 
As Simeon held that beautiful baby boy Jesus in his arms, he praised God. This is Simeon's psalm of praise and a touching expression of his extraordinary faith. This is known as the Dunk Demitus from the first two words of the Latin translation. It is the fourth of five psalms of praise that Luke included in his birth narrative. Simeon said, and I quote, Lord, you gave me your word, and now it is happening. My eyes have seen your salvation. End of quote. Now, he said, I can die in peace. Almighty God rewarded Simeon's great faith. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4 states, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. God honors devout, righteous people. His promise to Simeon was at long last fulfilled. The Holy Spirit revealed to a humble and devout man that he would see God's child before he died. Simeon was blessed by Almighty God with a long life. Proverbs 10, 27 states, The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. Simeon was looking forward to death. He was looking forward to the time when he would die. Why? He knew where he was going. He knew where he was going. Romans chapter 14, verse 8, the Bible states, For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or or die. We are the Lord's. The Holy Spirit led Simeon to the right place to find Jesus. Simeon, while recognizing Jesus, spontaneously burst out into a celebrative song. God does not forget His people, nor does He forget His promises to them. His promises are not always fulfilled in quite the way that we expect because of our partial understanding. But God always fulfills His promises, sometimes in ways much greater than we had expected. The ruined city will respond to the call to sing for joy because the Lord has provided comfort and redemption. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 10 states, The Lord has made bare His holy arm, Meaning, he's, meaning He has rebuilt His power. In the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Jesus came to save the Jews as well as the Gentiles. Acts chapter 28, verse 28 states, Therefore let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles and they will hear it. Now that is something to be joyful about. Isaiah's prophecy has been fulfilled from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. Jesus is the light of the world. In John 8, 32, he states, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Today, I plead with you with every ounce of strength that is within me to allow the power of Almighty God to enlighten you. Simeon was joyful. Simeon was joyful. He had received the promise of the word of the Lord that he would see Jesus, the Messiah, before he went to heaven. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 25 tells us this, For I am the Lord, I speak and the word which I speak will come to pass. It will no more be postponed for in your days, O rebellious house. I will say the word and perform it, says the Lord God. Simeon was joyful. Do you have the heart of Simeon? Simeon was looking for Jesus. He's coming back again. Are you ready to meet him today? Simeon was obedient Simeon was joyful. And thirdly today, Simeon was prophetic. Simeon was prophetic. Look back in Luke chapter 2 at verses 33 through 35. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Simeon went from being joyful to being prophetic. 
to prophesy to foretell what will happen in the future. Simeon told Mary and Joseph what would happen to their son. He would be accepted and he would be rejected. Jesus was hated by many. Jesus was mocked. Jesus was rejected. Jesus was ridiculed. Jesus was insulted. Jesus was despised. Jesus was humiliated. Dr. W.A. Criswell states, and I quote, the fall and rising again of many indicated that those who reject the Messiah will be cast down while those who accept Him will rise through salvation. End of quote. Rising can also be translated resurrection. If both fall and rising refer to the same people, the meaning is that only through humiliation will Israel be able to ascend to the hill of the Lord. Jesus' own people, the Jews, rejected Him and they still do today unless they're truly born again. Perhaps you're watching this broadcast today, A Date with Destiny. Perhaps you're listening or watching over the internet and you are of the Jewish faith and you have rejected Christ as your Messiah today. I'm going to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your Messiah, as your Savior, and as your Lord. Don't put this decision off any longer. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to you about this matter for many years now as a Jewish person. Today is your date with destiny. In John 1.11, the Bible states He came to His own and His own did not receive Him. Being rejected by your own people will literally tear your heart out by the roots. Mary would watch her son endure the greatest suffering in history, dying on the cross for the sins of the world, sins that he did not commit. Peter tells us in 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that He might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Simeon told Mary that a sword would pierce through her own soul. The image here is of a large broadsword striking Mary in her heart. Her grief would be unbearable. If you've ever given up a child to death, you know how Mary felt. Psychologists tell us that the greatest pain a human being can ever experience is giving a child up to death. In John 19, verses 25 through 27, the Bible says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. And then lastly, Simeon prophesied that the thoughts of many hearts would be revealed. Jesus is a litmus test for where people stand before God. He is a judge who will one day expose the thoughts of all of us. In Romans chapter 2, verses 15 and 16, the Apostle Paul states, "...who show the work of the law written in their hearts." their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them in the day when God will judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Jesus is coming, brought decision time. Our friends in Australia call it crunch time, the time when you may, must make a decision to accept Christ as your personal Lord and Savior by faith or to reject Him as your personal Lord and Savior by faith. That time is for you today. Don't reject Christ. This may be your last opportunity to receive Him as your Lord and Savior by faith before you go out into the ceaseless ages of eternity. People must accept Jesus and rise to salvation or reject Him and fall into judgment in the place called hell. In John 14, 6, Jesus states, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father unless he comes through me. Simeon was prophetic. He knew that he was going on to glory. And the prophecy from the Holy Spirit had been fulfilled. Do you have the heart of Simeon? He was looking for Jesus. 
First of all, Simeon was obedient. Secondly, Simeon was joyful. Thirdly, Simeon was prophetic. Do you have a heart like Simeon? He was looking for Jesus. This Christmas, may you be just like Simeon. May you be looking for Jesus. He's coming back. Are you ready to meet Him? The great message of Christmas is that Jesus, the Savior of the world, fulfilled His mission to die on the cross for our wretched sins, and He's coming back again. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, Behold, He is coming with clouds, and every eye will see Him, even they who pierced Him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of Him. Even so, the Bible states, Amen. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Simeon got to see Jesus. You're going to see Him one day. You're going to stand before Him one day. Are you prepared? Are you ready? The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. We're born into sin because of the sin of the first man and the first woman. God created Adam and Eve. They sinned in the Garden of Eden. They disobeyed God. They ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil from which God had expressly told them that that fruit was forbidden. Sin came into the world. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then the Bible says in Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you continue to live in your sin in your life and you die without Christ, without His forgiveness of your sins, you will die in your sins. And that word death is translated eternal separation from God and man in the place called hell. For the wages of sin is death. But there's an exception to that law. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God. Salvation is a free gift. The free gift of God is eternal life. Eternal life is real. Eternal life is everlasting in heaven forever or in hell forever. Where will you live within 60 seconds after you die? Heaven or hell. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then to be born again, to become a follower of Jesus Christ, to be transformed by the power of God, you must repent. You must repent of your sins. The Bible says in Acts 3, 19, repent and be converted that your sins will be blotted out. When the times of refreshing will come from the presence of of the Lord. I don't understand everything that I'd like to understand about supernatural transformation because it is a great work of God and only He knows all the details. I just know that the Bible promises us that when we truly repent and turn from all of our sins, Jesus will cleanse us and forgive us of all of our sins just as if we'd never ever sinned. He blots them out. He erases them and He'll never bring them back up to us again. And then the Bible says to be born again to have Jesus as your Messiah, that you must accept Him by faith. You must accept Jesus by faith. Faith is believing even though you cannot see. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is God's love for you and for me that we do not deserve. And because of His love for you and for me that we do not deserve and our faith in Him, we can be saved. You can't save yourself. I can't save you. Only Jesus can save you today. I want you to put your faith and your trust in Him today. And then the Bible says to be born again, you must believe that Jesus is Lord. You must believe that Jesus is Lord. Lord. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you can be saved. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do 
Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you? Do you believe that after he died on the cross for you, he was buried in a borrowed tomb for three days? Do you believe that after he was in that tomb for three days, God brought him back to life? That's called the resurrection. If you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the Bible says that you can be saved. And then the Bible says that God loves us so much that he died for us. Romans 5, 8 and 9. But God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Jesus died on that cross for you. He took your sins and my sins and the sins of the world. And then one of the greatest verses ever written is Romans 10, 13. For whosoever, for whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. All you have to do today is to call on the name of Jesus and ask Him to cleanse you and forgive you of all of your sins. And He will. And He'll be your Lord and Savior by faith. All you have to do is call today. You're Jewish. And, and today you're ready to accept Jesus as your true Messiah. You're lost in your sins as a Gentile. Today is your day to accept Jesus as your Messiah. I want you to pray with me right now, right where you are. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I know that you died on the cross for me. I repent. I turn from all my sins. Please forgive me. I now accept you as my Savior. And I follow you as my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me, I pray. I give to you, sweet Jesus, complete control of my life. Thank you for saving me. Give me the peace that I have been saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, you've been transformed by the power of God. You've gone from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Christ has written your name down in his Lamb's book of life in heaven, and it'll never be erased. I want to help you in your new walk with him. You be sure and write to me today and let me know of your decision. And be sure and get involved in a good, balanced, Bible-believing church in the community where you live and ask your pastor to baptize you. God bless you. I love you.